Marvel Studios' latest movie, Guardians of the Galaxy, was a complete blockbuster, but we believe it could have had a better ending. Before we prove that, welcome to More Endings, where we explore better alternate endings to the different movies. Today, we'll explore the alternate endings for Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Prepare to be astonished as we'll take you through several ways this movie could have ended compared to what we watched in the cinemas. Also, please subscribe to the channel for more fascinating content about movie endings. Personally, we at More Endings love how Guardians of the Galaxy 3 ended. However, some Marvel fans on our team are unhappy about how such a fantastic movie could have such a lousy ending. Let's jog our memories about how the movie ended once again. If you're here, chances are you've seen it. But just in case you've been living under a rock and missed it, well, spoiler alert. Remember that Rocket has been critically wounded, and the Guardians are on a mission to save his life. The catch is, they need the passkey from one of the High Evolutionary's recorders, Thiel, which is kind of like the key to disable the kill switch. Now, they have to face the High Evolutionary on Counter-Earth, and although it smells like a trap, Peter Quill insists it's just a face-off. In some heart-wrenching flashbacks, we learn Rocket's the only creature creation of the High Evolutionary with true invention and original thoughts. The villain wanted to pick Rocket's brain, but our furry friend managed to escape before that happened. The High Evolutionary sends Aisha and Warlock to capture Rocket while he distracts the Guardians. Gamora steps up, saving Rocket, and Peter and Groot escape with Thiel, grabbing that crucial passkey from his head. Things take a dark turn when the High Evolutionary, unhappy with Counter-Earth, initiates a planet-wide self-destruct, resulting in Aisha's death and Warlock unable to save his mother. The wounded Warlock gets overpowered by Gamora, and the Guardians manage to tie him up on their ship. But here's the twist. Nebula, Drax, and Mantis break into the High Evolutionary's ship to save Peter and Groot, only to find themselves captured. Now, the High Evolutionary wants to trade the captured trio for Rocket, but Peter has a bold plan. He decides to bring Nowhere to the High Evolutionary's ship, giving the Guardians the firepower they need. As they infiltrate the ship distracted by Nowhere's arrival, the trio they were supposed to save escapes thanks to Mantis befriending a trio of Abilisks. In the final showdown, with a ship full of evolved human children, the Guardians confront the High Evolutionary, and Rocket makes a surprising choice not to strike the killer blow. Despite the explosive chaos, the Guardians survive, and Volume 3 brings a definitive ending. Peter heads back to Earth, Gamora rejoins the Ravagers, Mantis goes solo for some self-discovery, and Rocket becomes the new leader of the Guardians. Nebula and Drax stay on Nowhere to build a home for the rescue children. And before the tear-jerking final dance party on Nowhere, Groot expresses his love for the team, just in case you needed another reason to shed a tear. Now, what are the loopholes in the story and how different could the ending have been if they had been perfected? Well, we're here to explore some I've got for you. The High Evolutionary should have been imprisoned. You know, according to IGN, there was this scene in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 that got snipped from the final cut, and it was kind of a big deal. So, the High Evolutionary, the villain, was saved by Drax when his ship went kaboom. The Guardians, being the good guys, took him back to nowhere. And in this deleted scene, you see Rocket putting the guy in prison. Now, this is important because in the actual movie, the High Evolutionary's fate is left hanging in the air. Drax brings him back. Yeah, but it's this quick moment during all the chaos, so lots of folks didn't catch it. The deleted scene, though, makes it crystal clear. The High Evolutionary is sitting there in prison, looking all gloomy, fixing up a piece of his face. It's like, yep, the bad guy is behind bars. Now, the reason this scene matters is that it gives closure to the whole villain saga. In the movie, without this deleted scene, people were left wondering what happened to the High Evolutionary. Did he escape? Is he planning some sneaky revenge? Having him in prison, looking all sad and regretful, would have neatly tied up that loose end. It's like letting the audience know, hey, the bad guy got what he deserved, and he's reflecting on his actions. That extra bit of clarity could have made the ending even more satisfying for everyone who sat through the cosmic roller coaster that is 
Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, a false redemption arc before punishment. All right, picture this alternate ending for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Everything seems like it's wrapping up all nice and tidy. The high evolutionary, after some cosmic soul searching, appears to have turned over a new leaf. The Guardians, cautiously optimistic, decide to trust him, thinking they've won. You've got this moment of camaraderie among them, patting themselves on the back for bringing the bad guy to the good side. But wait, here comes the twist. Right when they least expect it, the High Evolutionary pulls a fast one. Maybe during a crucial battle or a celebratory feast on Nowhere, he reveals his true colors, betraying the Guardians. That'd be a jaw-dropping moment, and you would practically feel the audience collectively gasping in the theater. Now imagine the chaos that ensues. The Guardians, who just let their guard down, are caught off guard by the very villain they thought they had redeemed. The High Evolutionary, with a sinister grin, reveals that it was all an act, a brilliantly played deception to lull them into a false sense of security. This unexpected twist not only keeps the audience on the edge of their seats, but also sets the stage for future conflicts. Trust issues among the Guardians skyrocket creating internal tensions and a whole new level of unpredictability in their adventures. It's a game changer that leaves everyone wondering who they can really trust in the vast and unpredictable universe of the Guardians of the Galaxy. And that, my friend, would have been an interesting way to bring about an even more thrilling ending. But to me, what led to the ending and the ending are not unusual. And in order to stand out, there should be a uniqueness, of course, in a positive way. Make the main characters empathetic enough. All right, truth be told, Guardians of the Galaxy 3. It's got some cool stuff with Rocket's flashbacks, especially those gnarly experiments on animals. Now, those poor critters had me feeling some real terror, and I got all connected with their simple dreams of freedom. Their tragic deaths hit me right in the feels, you know? Here's the kicker, though. I found myself more attached to these side characters than the actual Guardians. That's where the narrative kind of lost its mojo for me. So picture this. What if one of our main heroes went above and beyond, like ready to sacrifice their life or go through some serious suffering for the greater good? I mean, we love our heroes, but for me, the writers barely gave a scratch. Like, come on, give me something to chew on emotionally. The absence of casualties among the main squad left me thinking, okay, I'll probably see them in the next MCU flick. No biggie. But imagine if one of them, someone we truly care about, took a hit for the team, or faced real adversity. That's the kind of stuff that hits home and makes you remember a movie. The contrast between feeling for those side characters and the guardians who made it out unscathed could have been balanced out with some serious hero drama. It's all about keeping us guessing, keeping us on the edge, and making those victories feel earned. Peter Quill's departure to Earth should not have happened, or should have been short. Okay, let's talk about Peter Quill, the dude who decided to pack his bags and head back to Earth at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Now I get it, everyone's got their family stuff to deal with. But here's the scoop Peter's like the brain and heart of the Guardians. In the quest to save Rocket, he was making moves, pulling strings, and showing he's probably the smartest cookie in the bunch. Leaving him on Earth is like taking the hot sauce out of the taco. It's just not the same. I mean, come on, evil never takes a vacation. There's always some new baddie waiting to stir things up. If Peter's the one who knows the ropes, leaving him behind is a major subtraction from the Guardian Dream Team. They need someone who can steer the ship, and Peter's got that leadership. Imagine if he came back to the galaxy, ensuring peace and keeping those cosmic crazies in check. It's not just about his family on Earth, it's about his family in space too. Without him, it's like the Guardians are missing a crucial piece of the puzzle, and who knows what kind of trouble could be brewing around the corner. Peter needs to be out there, leading the charge and making sure the galaxy stays the right kind of crazy. Anyway, this brings to a close some of the alternate endings many would have loved to see. What's your favorite alternate ending? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and let's continue the conversation on how the epic showdown could have taken a different turn in the Marvel comics. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more exciting contents just for you.